Hello and welcome to the Minnesota Twins franchise on MLB The Show 17. My name is Mr. Hurricane, and this was supposed to be the MLB Draft episode. I had everything all mapped out, and I wanted to include a game with the AA team, the Chattanooga Lookouts, as they have our draft picks from year one in this series. Thought it'd be a nice way to draft some new players and check in on the talent we drafted last year. It seemed like a good idea, but the gameplay captured for this episode suggests that I should move in a different direction. So the MLB draft is going to be in the following episode, and today we're going to spend some time down at AA with the Lookouts, and you're going to watch one of the most ridiculous games I have ever gone through on MLB The Show. And as you can see in the clips earlier, our lookouts are 40 and 18. They are the top team right now in double A, and they are riding an 11 game winning streak heading into this matchup against the Jackson Generals. Another good team, but even their record does not compare to what we've put together. We have dominant pitching that has led us. The offense has been good at times, but our top offensive producer, Willie Ordonez, got hurt earlier this season. He was one of our key draft picks last year. So let's step in the game now with our top pick in last year's draft. The number one overall selection was Maxwell Fowler. And Max here gets into a little bit of first inning trouble with an infield single and then an error charge to him. Max's game is more about control, and he has the control artist quirk, and he's able to limit walks. He's not really an overpowering pitcher, but we did see in spring training this year when he was with the team. He has some strikeout potential. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a lot of strikeouts at double A. So we get out of that first inning jam, and then move on to the second. Here is first baseman Lewin Diaz, who gets a single through the left side. A couple batters later, it's Luis Sardinius who was just signed as we've had a lot of injuries down in the minor leagues this year and he ends up flying out. We'll go into the second inning here. It's Maxwell Fowler working on that slider on the outside corner and he'll get a couple good ones here as Freeman goes down swinging. Maxwell has five pitches in his repertoire and there is the sweeping curveball. It can also get a few strikeouts here and there. Fowler is more movement over velocity. He has 73 break and 66 velocity. And what you're seeing here is a lot of contact, whether it's in play or not. And so what I was kind of seeing in this game here is that Fowler probably needs a bit more pitch to contact element of his game. He's a sinker ball pitcher. He can keep the ball on the ground, and as we saw with all the foul hits over and over again, we probably have to focus on getting more weak contact hits over swinging strikeouts. But here was a big hit from the Jackson Generals as they get the home run to deep left field. This is Jamie Westbrook. Seventh home run on the year given up by Maxwell Fowler. He allows one every nine and a half or so innings, so that's at least at a good mark right now, but the Generals take the lead. We move on to the fourth, and this is Carlos Rodriguez, the first-year player drafted last year, outfielder, and he flies out to right field, but Rodriguez is hitting over 300 this season. Then in the fifth, a pitch to hit here for Angel Vielma, and the young shortstop pops out to shallow center field. Fowler was able to settle in after we kind of adapted a bit and kept things in the strike zone and let them make some contact. The pitch count was really too high to do anything else at this point. And as you can see, we still got some nice swinging strikes. Maxwell Fowler gets the chase and the strikeout here to finish off the fifth inning. Let's go on to the sixth now. This is Stuart Baines, a catcher who was picked up in free agency because we have suffered multiple injuries of that position in the minor league system. He ends up lining out and then the leadoff batter, Chuck Bearden. I had him play because he has exceptional power against righties, but he skies out as well. Two down in the sixth, and now one rip to right field. This is Alex Kirloff who leaves the yard. We saw a lot of the potential of Alex Kirloff last year. He was able to bring a lot of power here to the double A squad, and that's something we definitely lack. His numbers are down from where I thought they'd be this year. He has a 207 average, and this was his third home run. And it ties the game here. One apiece, two solo home runs for both sides. Maxwell Fowler able to get through the fifth inning and move on to the sixth. 
Here is a fly ball hit to center, easily caught by Chuck Bearden. Then with two down, trying to finish off another solid inning, Freeman deep to right center, and that is tracked down as well. So six solid innings from Maxwell Fowler, allowing five hits and just the one run. So we'll go to Sandy Bunty now out of the bullpen. He was our final selection in the draft, and there's a lot to be excited about with his game. Above average velocity and break, and there is the control nailing the corner there with that big breaking ball. 0-2 here in the seventh inning. There's that curveball again, but it gets scorched down the line. The batter wants to stretch this into a double. Throw from Carlos Rodriguez is in time, and he is out trying to extend the play. Rodriguez doesn't have the strongest arm, but he does make a good throw on this play. His fielding does need some work, but perhaps he's made some improvements if he can make a play like that. Sandy Bunty in the seventh, making batters look silly. Some ugly swings, you'll see that down here at Double A, but you want to see what players stand out, and Bunty definitely did. Let's go to the eighth, still a 1-1 ball game. Here's Vielma, hit hard to center field, but right to the center fielder. That is easily caught. Stuart Baines, the catcher, sits back on the breaking ball and goes the other way with it. This was my first time getting a real look at Baines playing at all. Had some good swings, but then Chuck Bearden off the shortstop's glove, and this ends up being ruled a base hit for Bearden. So two aboard, Alex Kirlaw. And they begin to pitch around him. 3-1, he gets a pitch to hit, and he skies it into the outfield, but this does not have the carry, and that is it for the eighth. We go on to the bottom of the frame. We have Bunty staying in the game, playing really well. And this goes to second. It is a 6-4-3 double play. Bunty trying to finish off the eighth. And there is a ground ball past the first baseman, Diaz. So a chance here for the Generals as they get runners at the corners. Bunty stays in. And he finishes things with that breaking ball and another strikeout. I'm excited to see where things go for the exciting 19-year-old. To the ninth inning now. Here's the win, Diaz. This bloops in past the diving second baseman. We get a base hit here. Lookouts trying to get something going. It was a really quiet offensive day. Then Rodriguez trying to go through the middle, but the play is made and the double play is recorded. So we're going bottom nine. And entering the game is Wilmer Font, who was acquired in the Yadier Alvarez trade last year. And he's putting together a really nice season. He gets a lot of movement on his pitches, and that creates opportunities for some strikeouts as he gets one there using his changeup. And another one here just below the zone. Nice control here from Font. So on to extra innings we go. Vielma getting jammed here down the line. And this is going to fall in as the diving outfielder makes things a bit worse. And it turns into a double. Vielma holds up at second. So Stuart Baines draws the count full, puts it in the air to center field. That is a lazy fly ball, and Vielma will be left at second base. So bottom 10, Wilmer Font still in the game. And this is where we start to get a little unlucky with some of these calls. Nothing close here for Wilmer Font as he walks the batter. And then they bunt him over, just trying to win the game here and snap our streak as we do record the out at first. Looking for the second out, working on that slider. It's fouled off. Two and two. We'll try the change up, and that gets the strikeout. Two down here. Font trying to force an 11th inning. 1-0 count, scorched up the middle, stumped by Vielma from his knees to first base. Got the out to end the inning. This is Angel Vielma, and he saves the game right there. A base hit scores that runner, especially with how deep the outfielders were playing. Vielma makes the diving stop, and defense is his calling card. That play got me pretty hyped up. So on to the 11th now, Chuck Bearden, waiting on that curveball, deep in the outfield, it's down for extra bases, and Chuck Bearden stands at second. Then we get Alex Kirloff trying to advance him, there's a good pitch to hit, slam to left, and it's caught, we do not test the tag. So Lamont Wade looks at a changeup, and he ends up going down looking. So it's up to Luis Diaz. Diaz up the middle, slow roller for the shortstop. 
play made, we cannot get the go-ahead run. So we've got to try forcing a 12th inning. Wilmer Font staying in the game, pitching at a very high level. There's the changeup as he gets ahead in the count. And a pop-up behind first base. Diaz gives chase and gathers underneath it to force another extra frame. In the 12th, we have Carlos Rodriguez working the count as this reliever was at 67 pitches. That gets down. Another kind of weak hit there for the lookouts, but we'll take it at this point. And then a line drive over the shortstop's head. And that takes a rest in the gap. First and second here for the lookouts. The catcher now, Stuart Baines. Pop foul heading for the seats, but this will not be a souvenir. And it will not get us the go-ahead run. Bottom 12 in the game is DJ Baxendale. An ERA under two, but he gives up a line drive into left field. The Generals trying to take this game here in the 12th inning. Runner on first, grounded to second base, and they go 4-6-3 to turn two. 12 innings, not enough. We gotta go to the 13th. Kirloff pops it up, skying one for the first baseman. We did not get a lot of hard hit contact in this episode, and a lot of it was just base hits. So nothing there in the 13th for us. How about a great diving stop by Lewin Diaz? We saw plenty of great defense in this game, and that was unexpected. Now we're gonna get a base hit from Alberto Salgado. Another player I had to sign, we were low on infielders. Salgado gets the hit, then a base hit to left. This is Sardinius giving us two on and two down. Angel Vielma reaches that one outside the zone, grounds it softly, play made at second base. We're getting base runners, but we just can't score. Bottom of the 14th inning, scorched to center, playable though, and caught by Chuck Bearding. The bullpen was doing an outstanding job. Two down, 0-2 count, but the inning will not end right there. He gets past Diaz at first base, down to the wall as we do get it into the infield, but not until it becomes a double. So 0-2 to the next batter, slider gets him swinging. 14 innings are not enough in this double A matchup. We're going to the 15th, and we're going to the bench. Torrey Hunter Jr. replaces Chuck Bearden, and immediately pulls one down the line in left. That ends up being a single, but he's got speed, so we'll let him take off. Kirloff misses, but Hunter steals second base. Just a base hit needed to drive him home, but Kirloff waves at a slider below the knees. Now it's Lamont Wade's turn, the three hitter. He pulls one high and hard to right field. And this is playable on the edge of the grass. We couldn't score another run, so we've got to force the 16th. In the game is Luke Bard. 13 innings this year, no runs allowed. Bard gets the pop up after a strikeout. That's right, we're going to the 16th. This game just would not end. Nothing but solo home runs had scored runs. Here's Salgado. Fly ball right center. That's not a run producing kind of hit. So we go bottom 16. Bard still in the game. Nailing the corner with the fastball. And getting the waving miss on the slider. Luke Bard trying to force the 17th. Fastball in there. 0 oh and 2. Another one, strike three! To the 17th inning we go! I couldn't believe it! Nobody could score! Here's Vielma, hit to third base. That'll stay in the infield, he's retired. How about Stuart Baines? Anybody, give us something! There we go, into the left center gap. And the catcher reaches first base. So Torrey Hunter Jr.'s next at bat, and it's picked up by the first baseman to end the inning. Bottom of the 17th inning. In the game, Raul Fernandez, our closer, had to come in. He gets the big strikeout. Fernandez this year, by the way, 26 saves, and his pitches were untouchable to the 18th inning. Can we get it this time? Lamont Wade over the second baseman's head. That is down for a base hit. So we get Lewin Diaz grounding it through the left side. Back-to-back -back hits. It's as good of an opportunity as we've had. 
One down though, this is Rodriguez. He grounds it to short. They get one. Rodriguez beats out the throw. So we have a chance. Just a hit required. Salgado ripped into the night sky. And it's catchable. Once again, we cannot break the one to one tie. The game just simply would not end. Inning after inning. Now I lost some of the gameplay here. I missed the bottom of the 18th, the 19th inning, and the 20th inning, and most of the 21st. So let's head into the 21st inning, second and third after back-to-back -back hits. This is Salgado trying to bring us a run, but that doesn't have the depth. We're not gonna test it. We didn't have the speed at third base. How about Luis Sardinius in his ninth at bat on the night? Second and third? Base hit center field, thank you! The tie finally broken! Two to one in the 21st inning. And it's Sardinius in his first game as a lookout, signed right before this game. We tried to get some more runs, but failed to do so. But we finally had the lead, could we end the game? We were down to our last bullpen pitcher, Chris Anderson, who gets the strikeout. We were warming up starters at this point, and the Generals get a base hit. They're trying to get that run back, and in the next at bat, the runner goes on to second and safe. A base hit could tie this game up. One and two count, strike three on the high fastball. Two down for Chris Anderson. He goes back to that high fastball, gets ahead in the count. Doesn't get the chase, two and two. There we go, the game's finally over. It took 21 innings. What? What, what time is it? Uh, where am I? Oh man, it's over? Man, I thought this game was never going to end, but it did. I thought I could just sit down, get a nice game played here for the MLB draft episode. But well, this game gave me something I had never seen before. We go 21 innings, and the game took between two and two and a half hours to play. I missed recording the uh, 18th through 20, most of the 21st inning, as I was recording this all directly to the PlayStation itself. I wasn't at my desk actually recording this normally, so that's why there was the issue there. But this was a, it was a really fun game. My favorite moment came in the 10th inning with that Vielma play at short to save it. I wanted to see him win it then on offense, but the game would not end for another 11 innings. But you got a great look at many of the players down at AA for us. And watch the XP here. I go from 81 through 82. Yes, we're going to go through 83 and nearly clear level 84, all because the game was over two games long. But hey, we got the win streak extended. I'm not sure how well we're going to do in our next game with everybody tired and our bullpen completely gassed, but we got that victory. The players drafted last year have made a major difference down at AA. We have a lot of impressive pitching talent now within the organization, which has long been the weakness of the Minnesota Twins. Our next draft is going to be more focused on offense. As you can tell, we don't have a lot of it down in the minor leagues right now. We have players I'm excited about, but we could use some more impressive bats down at the minor leagues. I wish we had a chance to play with Willie Ordonez in this game. He probably would have ended things a lot sooner than they did. Let me know in the comments down below, what is the longest game you have played on MLB The Show? 21 innings is definitely my career long. And for it to last, you know, two and a half hours was something I was not ready for. But it was still fun. I went through every pitch. There was no simming I had. I sat through every moment of that ball game. So up next will be the actual draft episode. I am not sure yet what I want to do with our first round selection. I thought I had it all figured out. But as you scout these players, the scouting reports get finalized and a lot of things change. And for one player, Dwight Esposito, he was supposed to be a potential blue chip prospect, but it turns out he is not the prospect we thought he was now that the scouting has been finished. So I've got to figure out what is the plan in this draft and how do we make the Minnesota Twins organization better? 
Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this episode. This was an interesting one, and I hope you had a good time with it. Please leave a like if you did. Leave any feedback you have down below in the comment section. I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.